Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Excel Automotive in Waltham, Massachusetts, we're driving a Series 4 1991 Alfa Romeo Spider. It is a Series 4 because this is the end of the line. They produced these Spiders from 1966 to 1994, giving the Miata's run a run for its money. Honestly, this was around for a very long time, and it's interesting because it wasn't changed all that much between the 60s and the 90s. It definitely still has that old school vibe. And even though this would have been sold at the same time as an NA Miata, they drive completely differently. Now, first off, this Pininfarina design is absolutely gorgeous. And you can see sort of Mondial written all over it. The proportions are wonderful, despite being front engine. It has a two liter four cylinder, naturally aspirated, of course, with about 120 horsepower. This being a series four in the 90s has a Bosch electronic ignition. But if you hadn't seen the airbag and the steering wheel, you probably wouldn't assume this was that modern. It definitely has that old school 60s Italian vibe. These wheels are absolutely gorgeous gorgeous and are very Ferrari. Everything about this car is kind of like mini Ferrari and the fact that you can get these for like a really nice one for around $20,000 puts this in a really neat price point because the point obviously isn't to go to a racetrack or to be the fastest thing in the world. It's just to enjoy the driving experience. So let me show you around. Inside we've got these great door handles, these seats, these leather seats with the sort of Alcantara or suede inserts, really gorgeous, very Dino, very old school Ferrari. That's got like Testarossa written all over it. Under the hood, we love a hood that flips up from the front. That's great. And this is the heart of our little Alpha, and it is a great low bassy tone. It's really enjoyable to hear and drive, and it has about as much torque as it does horsepower. So the low end on this is very grunty. You don't feel the need to necessarily rev it out. This is a really easy buzz around town kind of thing because you don't always need to go for that downshift. You can just kind of plant your foot in it and she'll go. These headlight guards are gorgeous. They kind of remind me of the 356 Speedster guards. But again, everything on this thing just seems to feel older. It doesn't feel like a 90s car. And I very much appreciate a roof that just folds back. There's no hatch that has to open. You just unclip two things and back it goes. No problems, lickety split. You just need to make sure that you're folding that rear glass, the plastic properly, because you don't want to injure that. To get to your fuel door, down here and you've actually got a little lock there as well as on the trunk so for your valet key i assume that's to keep everybody away from stealing your fuel and your stuff got a ton of stuff back here so don't mind that extra floor mats and some of my cameras but it's like a reasonable amount of space and you could definitely do a weekend getaway in it and I'm absolutely in love with this little single tailpipe that's offset. It's not dead center. So let's go take this thing out for a drive and see how it stacks up against its obvious and likely more reliable competition, the Mazda Miata. It really doesn't feel like that at all, but it has a charm all its own. The strange Italianness of it all starts immediately when you get in because this ignition is way down here. It's very awkward to get to. So when you have extra keys in your keychain, you know, they're just kind of sitting on this deck. That is quite a warning sound. Starts right up, no problems. We got 60, almost 61,000 miles on the clock here. Have a somewhat lazy tag, which I appreciate. That's very Italian. This shifter, I didn't think I'd be making this comparison today. It's like in the location of a Carrera GT. It's right up in the dashboard, kind of a funky thing. And it, you know, it means you don't have to move your hand too far from the steering wheel to get into it. So the first thing you notice when you get in is this seating position. It's very Italian. I've got kind of my knees almost up against this steering wheel. I don't know, maybe there's an adjustment I'm missing, but chances are this is just the way it goes. So you get your legs open a little bit, proper Italian sports car, and it's not quite a Miata. It's got a little more of a luxurious feel to it. It honestly feels more like a small Mercedes SL. It's of course rear wheel drive, so you know, we've got that fun sports car vibe about it.
sort of has the low bassy tone of like an E30 BMW. Check this out, we got a TR6. That's fun. <laughs> That's like exactly what you would cross shop with this. So while a Miata makes you just want to ring it out constantly, this feels a lot more like a touring car, a GT car. It's got that like SL vibe. You don't necessarily need to chuck it into corners, although you certainly could. It still is able to take some bumps too, which is nice. I mean, you want to be able to have fun in your sports car on real world roads. You don't want to always have to commit to just being on like the world's most perfect roads to enjoy a car. Keep going for the headlight stock instead of the blinkers. But what would an Italian car be if it didn't have strange controls? The front and rear of the car feel like they're like disconnected a little bit, which this is where the SL vibe comes in because like you turn the car in, we're gonna avoid some potholes, right? We turn the car in, it feels like the front goes first, then the rear, and like you just notice that it's not one cohesive feeling. And that's why I feel like it's a little more of a GT car than let's say a Miata fighter. Like I, I don't think I would choose this as my autocross machine.
if you're hunting for one of these is because you're hunting for a unique experience, something a little bit different, something that's gonna be entertaining at low speeds, at all speeds, really. And something that's kind of fun to show up in. This has a really distinct design. It has a design that looks way more expensive than it is. And, you know, I totally respect it. We don't need to always be after, like, stats and numbers. This is genuinely entertaining. You're going to get a five-speed manual. Rear-wheel drive spider, a roadster. You're gonna have a blast and it sounds fantastic. And it's a beautiful day. I mean, it's just getting to that point here where we're even able to put the top down, where we're able to do, you know, a 50 degree roadster day. I'm here for it. I live for this. Like I'm always gonna be the guy that's gonna go out in the convertible when it's just a little too cold, still put the top down, wear a jacket and a hat. Like I love it. I love the feeling of the wind in my hair, whether it's a fun, like legitimate crazy sports car, like a McLaren 600 LT Spider or a Miata or a Bentley Azure. But this is a new one for me and I'm finding it utterly charming. So I wanna thank Excel Automotive in Waltham, Massachusetts for the opportunity to drive this little Alpha Spider. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks to the Patreon supporters for helping me get through each month with a little extra gas money. It definitely means a lot. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. You know how when an automaker comes out with a brand new car and you're like, you know what, it's great. I'm gonna wait for the second or third year of production so they work out the kinks. I mean, this started in 1966. So if you buy the 90s version of it, I think you get like what should be, you know, the optimal version. <laughs> you still get the sensation of driving a little 60s Roadster, but you get an airbag, right? You get an airbag, that's not so bad.